What's up guys, welcome back, Brian Clavin, and we're gonna continue to break down our senior men's national team player pool. Last week we went into it and it was John Brooks, all right? Lock starter, I said it, signed, sealed, and delivered. Uh, knocking on wood for all of us. Uh, that he is spared from injury and hopefully he continues to get big games and big minutes and steers clear of those injuries like I said 40 to 50 games per season between national team duty and Wolfsburg this would be amazing two years down the line we have uh, John Brooks at his absolute prime you know in the rumors is uh, consensus is that from 27 to like 30 is the prime for some of these elite footballers and we're gonna enjoy his best years are yet to come, all right? So to partner him, I'm going to go with uh, Chris Richards, okay? And I'm saying that today, this guy needs to be incorporated to our senior men's national team yesterday. And I'm not saying it like everybody else says it. I'm not saying it because of pedigree. I'm not saying it because, oh wow, he made a Bayern first team call up now when they uh, were champions against Werder Bremen. That doesn't matter to me. Pedigree means nothing to me, okay? It's not like everybody else that jumped on the Serginio Des bandwagon after Ajax said he's good. No, I have my own eyes. I have my own ideas. And to me, Chris Richards, somebody that I've been tracking for four years now, uh, I don't need any proof. I don't need Bayern to tell me he's good. I don't need him to go out on loan like everybody's saying he should. He will be fine wherever he is at, whether that's at Bayern and continue to fight for his life and make his mark there, or if he goes to a, another first division club. Bottom line is, he needs to be integrated to our national team now, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it's very, very important for him to start getting that swagger that he, he has always had in his game. I mean, even the Chris Richards as Texans Houston, he was a confident kid. After all the knocks he took, he was a confident kid. He was just mostly athletic, he was a specimen, he was a beast, but he was confident. And he grew in confidence over the years. You know, I think it's important for everybody to understand, not everybody knows Chris Richards' story, and take a quick glance uh, and go down memory lane with me, all right? On the club side of things, this is a guy who testified himself recently on several podcasts. He was snubbed. He was told by FC Dallas, no thank you, uh, early in his youth career. Didn't take it on the chin, he didn't, you know, cried and patted about it and said, hey, it hurt, but he kept working. And he found a good environment with Texans. He found a good coach with Eric Quill. And listen, they even took it to me. Well, they didn't take it to me. They got a, for two, uh, for a fortune on their side on that day in the final here at StubHub Center where they beat us on a bomb, an isolated bomb. But he was a rock. He was a, a very, very unique presence. And obviously with those experiences that year under Eric Quill, he ended up going to FC Dallas. Now, listen, all the hoopla that he's an FC Dallas product, that's false, guys. Let's just speak facts, okay? There's no hating going on. He's just not an FC Dallas product. He played 17 games for the FC Dallas Academy U19 level. 17 games, one of them against me at the showcase, I remember, all right? Then he played three playoff games. They were bounce and pool play, first time in a long time that Dallas has been bounced. And after that, he had just signed his homegrown deal, Mind you, I'm not gonna go into details here, but there was a civil war inside FC Dallas. There's a lot of uh, higher ups there, uh, without going into detail, whether it's staff or leadership, they were, it wasn't a consensus thing that this guy was gonna be a pro. It wasn't a consensus thing that they wanted Chris Richards in their organization, that they wanted to sign him. Listen, there's a lot of fighting that went on. They ended up signing the kid. Way before he turned a year as a, a Dallas player, he wasn't even eligible to play. I don't know how they did it. They finagled it. They got him a homegrown deal, but he couldn't play. So fortunately, they had that partnership with Bayern. He got shipped off on a loan to Bayern. You know, we all saw what happened in the summer here when they came to play the ICC, all those friendlies. Wow, Chris Richards on the scene, Bayern, American kid, center back, and he's playing. Yeah, it's preseason. They give him an opportunity, and the kid did well for himself. Showed that confidence that I'm talking about. Showed that swag that I'm talk talking about that's so important. So listen, this guy was on preseason with the, with the big boys, with Alaba. I remember he was on the plane with Alaba. It's a big deal, guys, all right? Playing against Man City here in the United States. So he played a whole season of U19 football in Germany, did well for himself with Bayern Munich's U19s. Yes, U19, it wasn't, oh, he should be playing on the second team. He should be on the first team. None of that, all right? This season, he got a whole season of second team football in his belt. Fortunately, Bayern had been promoted to the third tier of German football. So real competitive games in a real environment, right? In a real good team. I had the fortune of seeing Chris 
train and play for two weeks this season. So I saw it with my own eyes. He's a very good place. There's nothing wrong with Chris Richards' situation. Yesterday, before he got called to the first team and got his cap or his debut this season, all right, we don't need that pedigree to define what Chris Richards is. Again, I'll keep beating that drum. Let's flip the switch. So late bloomer, guys, at 15, 16, nobody knew who this guy was, all right? Dallas had snubbed him. We fast forwarded four years to where he is today. On the international side, this U.S. youth national team didn't know who this kid was, just like Dallas. Snub, 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 snub. Nothing. Never got any love. Until that mega camp in January of uh, 2018 came along, where all the national teams convened in Florida from the 20s down to the 14s, I believe. I don't know how many players were there. A ton. A shit ton. And listen, he made his mark. He had good performances. He impressed Tab Ramos. Tab Ramos promoted him uh, and gave him some looks with the U-20s after that. He stuck it out. He made an impression. Tab's somebody who has experience at that U-20 level, has seen a lot of players come through the pipeline. So made his mark there, showed that swag, showed that confidence. Fast forward to CONCACAF qualifiers. He was one of the three players brought in after pool play to uh, attempt to qualify us to the U-20 World Cup. We did that. Chris Richards dominant, two performances in CONCACAF against Mexico uh, in the final especially. And then we can fast forward to Poland, all right? In the U-20 World Cup in Poland, this guy, I'm not discovering anything. He was our best player, most consistent player, all five games, beast mode, uh, and continue to take his, his game to another level, compose on the ball, confident, winning duels, smashing people, recovering, uh, anticipating, just everything you need from a, a good central defender on the world stage in front of everybody, in front of a lot of eyes, a lot of ears. Uh, so that did a lot of good for his career. I'm sure there was a lot of interest in Chris Richards after that World Cup. So here we are today. I think it was rumored that he was going to be part of the U-20 camp here in January against Costa Rica. Didn't happen. The club didn't let him come. No worries. Now I'm going to say it again before I get into his qualities, his strengths, what I see in the player. He needs to be in the senior men's national team now, okay? We don't need him at the Olympics. We don't need him in U23 qualifiers. We don't need him in any of that stuff, okay? We need him ready for Qatar 2022. Yeah, I've said it multiple times. We're going to Qatar, all right? Now let's touch on what Chris Richards brings to the table, all right? Why he is the partnership immediately with John Brooks, the one that I named last week. This is going to be a unique partnership because, again, we want to be a dominant team. We got to have players that can boss the game from the back. We can't have guys that under any sign of pressure can, can't do it, can't break a line, panic, go direct, have no quality in the ball. No, Chris Richards has quality in the ball. Again, he's no Gerard Piqué, he's no Amérique Laporte, he's no John Stones. He doesn't have that type of quality. He can't clip a ball in between lines consistently exactly on, on the money, but he's confident in terms of making the right decisions, being correct on the ball, uh, breaking a line or two when he has to, putting a foot in it, pausing the game when he has to, playing sideways laterally, and not always just receiving the wrong way, not having any vision to go forward, and having to reset with his keeper, with Stefan in this, in this case. Richards brings composure with the ball, okay? And again, I start on the offensive side because we want to be this dominant team, especially in our region. Chris Richards today can handle CONCACAF. Easy, okay? Maybe Raul Jimenez is going to pose a threat. Maybe it's going to be a difficult matchup for him. But any other game, Chris Richards should be on the field now, okay? I'm not going to get into the details of his competitors, but they just simply are not the package that Chris Richards is today, nor are they what Chris Richards is going to be down the line come 2022, all right, defensively, I've already named two or three things. His anticipation is good. He sees plays developing. He can step into midfield and win balls and anticipate far from goal or on the, uh, on the, on the end line of the 18. He's actually the, quite the opposite of what I critiqued in John Brooks. I like his recovery. When the play gets behind him, the few times that it does, this guy's hauling ass to get back in the play and, and get himself back in the play in case that something comes up in the box, okay? He's very good in the air. Set piece offense, set piece defense, reading the play, clearing balls. He's got a good, good package. And listen, the reality is in a central defender, you need experience. So just like I said with Brooks, hopefully moving forward, he gets consistency, 40 to 50 games. Yes, the higher the level, the better. But being in the Bayern Munich training environment is nothing but good for Chris Richards. I don't want him going on loan. I don't want him going anywhere. Doesn't matter if he doesn't start every game. He could play on the second team. It's still a decent enough level as long as he's in the first team environment competing day in and day out. 
we have two and a half years to Qatar. Okay, he has plenty of time to continue to improve his craft. Today, Chris Richards is a six out of 10 on the international stage. Come Qatar 22, he may be at a 7.5. Come uh, USA, Mexico, Canada 2026, this is a guy that could be an eight, just like Brooks is, or 8.5. He's got a super high ceiling. I'm not discovering anything. All I know is I've seen this kid play. I've seen him ball. I've seen his mentality. He's a winner. He's a scrapper. He's a fighter. And listen, he's in an amazing environment. We can't say the same for all his competitors right now. All right? That's just the fact. We want to go and compete in World Cups. I'm not talking about sit back and get pelted by Belgium. We want to go compete. We need players with swag and confidence. This guy was on the team that took it to France. This is the team that had no fear. This is the team that's boss Mexico. I don't think Chris Richards has any fear playing against Mexico, just like Serginho Des does it. Well, until he got skinned by Tecatito. But listen, these guys have a different psyche, a different mentality. And this is one of the guys from that U20 team that needs to be put on our national team now to graduate us to the next level. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to continue to dissect it all. I think I'm going to come with a, a little bit of a curveball to you guys next week. A little bit of a Roberto Carlos curveball, not a pitcher. All right. And maybe I'll discuss a few names that shouldn't be on our team and the whys. All right. Enjoy, guys.